so it's not intuitive exactly how that energy is there. So it's not easy to see. Um, well, for example, if we store energy, I guess this is the question that we ought to be able to answer. How much energy is there? So we can make the intuitive argument that there's some energy there, because the moment we try to break the circuit, we see that energy released. But the question now we want to ask is, OK, how much energy is stored there? How would you calculate it? So for this law would be difficult. So because you're trying to calculate how much energy is stored here while the current is not changing. Because you're trying to calculate how much energy is stored in the state where there's no voltage change. But actually, you can use Faraday's law. Let me give you a um, way to intuitively calculate how much energy using Faraday's law. So what I have to do here is it's, uh, it's much the similar way with how we did it for a capacitor. We have to imagine a particular physical setup, which will allow us to calculate, OK, this much energy was needed to put this much current through here. So I'm going to say, well, so that's how much energy is stored here. Because I'm idealizing everything so that there's no energy dissipation anywhere. So this is what I'm going to, um, the setup that I'm going to imagine. Let's say I'm starting out with a zero current. So that at least very initially, there's a zero energy stored there. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to hook this up to a power supply. But it's a very special kind of power supply. It's a voltage ramp. So it's a voltage ramp that uh, ev everyone here kind of have a sense of what a ramp is. Yes. So I can describe the uh, voltage difference delta V due to this special kind of power supply. It's almost uh, too special to be impractical, but I will describe it anyway. You are not, never going to see this actually physically. So it's a very carefully controlled power supply, which this time varying thing that it provides, this is actually current. This, the, this is the current as a function of time. And the way it's providing this time-varying um, time current is it does that by applying a steady, constant uh, voltage of V0. Do you, so uh, I realized that when I was looking at this expression. So I want my. I want, the, uh, I want this expression to be simple. Right? So what I want my current to be is I want it to be expressed as a function of time. So it's going to some maximum value i naught at some final time. But as a function of time, it'll look like i naught over the total duration of time, capital T, times the time, the lowercase t, time at some particular moment. So when it reaches this time t, then this power supply will simply maintain this voltage i naught. And um, so when it simply maintain, maintains that voltage i naught, the voltage will actually drop to 0. Because it'll find that it doesn't have to put in any effort to keep the current going. And the same thing here. So it so goes from 0 voltage. And the, as it's trying to increase the current, it has to apply a steady a constant voltage. And once the current is no longer changing, then the voltage it applies drops to zero. Yeah. Everyone good? Yes? Um, the, lock, the uppercase T underneath is that period or something? Yeah. Well, just, it's a time constant. You could call it period. It's that uppercase T. So if you are looking at this mini graph that I'm drawing as the function of time and voltage and current, then the, that uppercase T would be represented here as this duration of time. This would be, this is T. Then. So what I'm going to look at is how much power does this power supply have to put into this solenoid? And that's how much energy would be end up being stored here. Then. So how do I calculate how much power is, um, how much power is being input? How do I calculate um, the input power? 
Any ideas? What expression support for power do you know that would be useful here? Actually, what expression for, for uh, what expressions for power do you remember? There should be three formulas uh, which are useful at different times, but you should have all three memorized. That applies to uh, electricity and magnetism, or rather, el electric circuit. People don't remember this. Yeah. So that's the very basic relationship that both Sandia and Katie were saying. Power in electric circumstances, it's given by current times voltage. And you can write out the current to see that this is the rate of change of energy. And actually, we can just stop here. This is going to be the formula that I use. Uh, if you have registers in the circuit, then the other two formulas, like I squared R and V squared over R may be useful. But this particular setup is a concocted artificial setup where resistance is specifically zero. So we are going to use this basic relationship for electric power. So power in must be equal to the voltage in times the current in. Right? Now here, I don't want power. That's the, the power is the rate of change of energy. I don't want that. I actually want the total change in energy. Yes? So from here, how do I calculate the total change in energy? From here, how do I calculate the total change in total energy in? Yeah, why do you say integral, Sangmin? Uh, because you're, OK. So um, yeah, if you jump to there, so can you tell me, tell me how you do set up the integral? Yeah, this is why I don't want people to just jump to the integral. So integral is something you set up when once you realize the simple algebra wouldn't work. I really want you guys to get out of the habit of simply saying integral. Because as I said a couple times before, that's like you know someone asks you, um, how do you calculate resistance here? And you say multiply or divide. It's, it's just a mathematical procedure. You have to know conceptually what's behind that integral you are setting up. So. I mean, if you're looking at what I've written down so far, um, that knowing that power is rate of change of energy, if you want total change in energy, how would you calculate power? Yeah, so, sorry, how would you calculate energy? You would do power times the duration of time, right? So this should be your intuitive first answer, that change of energy in or total amount of energy that goes in is the amount of power in times the amount of time that it takes. So this is your starting intuitive conceptual expression. Now having written this down, you should realize soon that if I simply do multiplication here, it doesn't work. Why does it not work? Yeah, current in is dependent on time. So this is, so you know, imagine actually doing this calculation. Imagine you want the actual numerical value of energy. So you plug in the numerical value of power, numerical value of duration of time. You know the duration of time, T, but this is where you run into a problem. So the current is a function of time, which means, so current in is a function of time which means this time power in is also a function of time. So depending on which time you are looking at, your power in could be zero, with a zero amount of current flowing. Or your power in could be at some maximum value. But your amount of power you are putting in, is, it's a function of time. It's changing with the time. So there is no one value of time uh, power that you can plug in. So what do you do in that case? You imagine now breaking this up into very small time intervals. 
you imagine breaking this up so that, all right, we cannot deal with the entire duration of time all at once. But what we can do is we can deal with a tiny amount of time interval. For the tiny amount of time interval, I can say my power in is more or less a constant rate. I can say, OK, so that's the tiny amount of change of energy. And so this is your starting place for setting up the integral. That's why I don't want you to say integral at right at the beginning, because for 9 out of 10 of you who say that, you won't know how to set up the integral. But more than half of you who start out with the algebraic relationship that I wrote down, you'll be able to see how that algebraic relationship turns into your integrand. Yeah? OK, so let me write this down. Um, so amount of power that goes in, so the total energy in is going to be, so based on this, it's going to be the, dura um, the integral over the total duration of time from time equals 0 to the end time capital T of the little change per each small interval of time. So that's equal to, I think I can actually do this um, on this small space. So power in is the uh, voltage, V0, times the current. So it'll be um, V0 I0 divided by T times T dt. Good. Um, all right, are all my units right? Yeah, yeah, I think my units are right. Um, so do the integral. It's a simple integral, polynomial integral. So, you know, integral is the antiderivative is 1 half t squared. So this is v naught i naught over capital T, 1 half t squared evaluated from 0 to capital T. Plug in this capital T. One factor of it cancels, and you get energy in is equal to uh, V naught I naught over 2 times the duration of time T. Yeah. Oh, I guess I could have done that without an integral. I'm multiplying this constant function times this triangular thing. So it's an area of the triangle of the, but whatever. So that's the amount of energy that went in. So what I want to say is that um, this energy that went in is equal to the amount of energy that's stored in this, um, um, that, that's the uh, amount of energy that's stored in this solenoid. So. So, so this is the statement I want to make. Uh, I need to be careful what to erase here. Um, yeah, um, I think if I get rid of this, I can uh, find more here. So this is the statement I want to make. That amount of energy that went in is equal to energy stored in solenoid. So the amount of energy stored in solenoid is um, equal to V0 times I0 over 2 times T. Um, this expression is a little bit, I don't know, unsatisfactory. So. Here's the main reason that it's not really satisfactory to me, at least. So how did I describe, how did I start uh, describing this solenoid? Let me redraw the solenoid I was describing earlier. The solenoid that I started describing wasn't exactly like this, this complicated setup. It was a general solenoid. It was, you know, any kind of coil, where I said there was a constant current um, that's flowing through here, right? Was there anything like this voltage if we not in this picture? 
No, right? So the expression that we came up with, it's very specific to how you charged up the solenoid. So you know, this expression is true for this, but if I want a generally applicable expression, then this doesn't work. Because if I'm simply telling you, well, I have a solenoid, I charge it up to I naught, then you sort of want to be able to say how much energy is, how much energy is toward here. Really, it's a function of this current I naught. You don't want to involve any you know, voltage that you don't know how it's actu it was actually applied. Right? So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to rewrite this, rewrite this expression so that it's independent of this voltage. So for that, I go back to for that I go back to this relationship here. So um, let me rewrite this expression over there. So what I have is all right, the the voltage across the inductor, voltage change across the inductor, is equal to the inductance times rate of change of current. Right. So uh, let me actually do this in a different color because I don't want to want this getting confused with the uh, generally applicable expressions. I mean, the, this is what I wrote down right now. It's generally applicable, but I'm going to plug in a specific situation. So this voltage change across inductor is inductance times the rate of change of current. So uh, well, the voltage that I applied was V naught. Right? There was a constant voltage I applied. So V naught is equal to inductance times the rate of change of current. And the way I characterized it is here. Um, as a result of this constant voltage being applied, I had this uh, current as a function of time that had a, had a constant rate of change. And the constant rate of change was I naught divided by capital T. So that this constant rate of change was I naught divided by capital T. So for this specific situation, this is the relationship that I can use to try to get rid of V naught here. So let me plug that in and let's see what happens. Um, so plugging this in, I get, um, so, well, <laughs> I guess I should just plug it in. L, I naught over T times the remaining quantities, I naught T over two. And you see that some of the things cancel out. That's uh, kind of convenient. The thing that was making me hesitate for a while back, if you noticed it, was that I had this time T that I didn't want in my final expression either, because that's sort of arbitrary thing. Here, you see that it cancels out. So that in my final gener generally applicable expression, it doesn't depend on that amount of time either. It doesn't matter if it takes me a minute to charge the uh, inductor or a, you know, a year to charge the inductor. So uh, we did that. If I write out this uh, expression, it becomes 1 half L I naught squared. 